I remember playing against him once and I just remember getting near him in a tackle and he just smelled amazing. It was like a middle, you know, 60 <laughs> minutes into a game and, you know, he looked incredible. He smelled amazing. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Glorious human being. Did you find you had to make a different plan for him in terms of as a winger in the backfield, did, you know, his kicking game or the fact that he'd love to play those crossfield kicks as well? Was there a different plan you had for him? Yeah, I think when, you know, whenever you came up against the All Blacks and even the Crusaders, you know, there were definitely two guys you did analysis on the whole week was, was Richie and Dan. Um, and they sort of came as this complete pair that no matter how much analysis you did for them, and like, you know, Dan would literally you know, potentially kick one ball across the wing and then he'd do like a reverse Carlos, you know, over your side. And it always just leave you wondering about, you know, what can you actually do to analyze him properly? And I think for us, whether it be for the Springboks, you know, playing against the All Blacks, we knew that, you know, if we could nullify the Richie McCaw threat first, because that was always a tough one. But if we could get to Dan, um, you know, that was probably the biggest thing that, you know, we sort of collapsed their game. You tried to analyze it, you know, as a wing, it was extremely tough because, it, you know, you could then kick left and right footers. So you actually had no understanding of, of what he could potentially do. And I think the way he put those around him into space, you know, whether it would be guys like Joe Rokothoko run, running off his wing, you know, that cross crossfield kick to, to Dougie Howlett, it was just... Yeah, it, it made it extremely difficult. I can't say I'm upset that he's stopped playing over in Japan because he'd won the competition <laughs> the, the last time he played in it. They'd won every game last year. It's, it's made it a bit a bit fairer, that's for sure. But I remember playing against him once and I just remember getting near him in a tackle and he just smelled amazing. It was like a middle, you know, 60 <laughs> minutes into a game and, you know, he looked incredible. He smelled amazing. I was like, what's going on here? You know, like, this is... You know, he still just managed to just drift through the game, you know, scored a try already. He's just, you know, glorious human being. I thought any time I played him as well, and you boys might agree on this, that he's so hard to get at as well. So hard to close down. So hard to get a shot on. He he was that good at being an out half. Like and no wonder and we talk about his body and how fit he is still, like, you know, and how, how well he smells, etc. And like <laughs> his face is he's still like model material really. So he, he never really got roughed up. In many games, and you know, you talk about if anyone's going to get you rough, rough you up a little bit, it'd be yeah. Back East and John Smith and these boys. <laughs> uh, you know, they're best in the business at it, and um, yeah. you know, he never, he never really took like much hardship throughout his whole career, and that's a testament to him too. Now, everyone talks about Sonny Bull and you know the way he changed the game from offloads. You know, Dan was doing it like from, I mean that 2005 Lions tour. You know, he was it was unstoppable. You know, as I think he was a 22 or 23 year old. Um, so yeah, I like to say, Shawnee, uh, you know, how he didn't get more bruised up is, is um, unbeknown to any of us, eh? You've been watching The House of Rugby Season 3 on Joe.